Hey what's going on guys, welcome to your 6th Python 3 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about standard input. Okay then, so from here on out, I think what we're going to start doing is moving away from directly messing around in the Python shell and we're going to start making some Python files in a text editor. And I think you're going to find this much more fun because we can start to build up some projects and then run those in the console over here. So I've gone ahead and opened up Atom, which is my text editor of choice, hopefully yours too. And I've created a new project folder called Python 3 Playlist. In here, I've got my first Python file called area underscore calc dot py. And dot py is the extension of Python files. So whenever you create a Python file, always give it a dot py extension. Over here on the right, I've still got my console open. I'm using Commander and I'm in this same directory. So make sure you are too, because that's going to be important when we come to run our Python files in it. If you don't know how to change directory and navigate around in here, dead simple. CD for change directory space dot dot goes up a level, takes you out of the current folder. And to go back into a folder, you say CD, then the folder name. In this case, I want to go back into Python hyphen three hyphen playlist. And that's going to bring me back in. OK, so that's how we navigate around there. Make sure you're in the same directory then that this is in over here. OK, so before we start making any kind of programs, I just want to go over a couple of things. So first of all, comments. You can't start a new programming language without knowing how to comment. In Python, it's really simple. You just do a hash and everything after this is just a comment and it's all going to be grayed out and ignored by Python, right? So we'd use comments just to remind us of certain things to do with the code, just in case we forget what we're doing later on. So there's comments for you. The second thing I want to talk about is standard input. So in Python, we can ask the user of our programs for some kind of feedback or input. We can ask them questions, for example, in this console, and the user can type in data, numbers or strings, and we can take that data into the program and do something with it. And the way we do that is by using a function called input. All right, dead simple. So we're calling this function using parenthesis and inside here we pass in a string. And this string is going to be output to this console so the user knows what they're expected to type in. For example, I could say something like this. Tell me your name, punk. And then if I run this, remember to run it, we say Python, then the file name. So it's area underscore calc dot py. It's going to run this file and it's going to ask me this question. So this thing that I wrote here, it's going to print out here and I can offer some input. And I'm going to say Sean and press enter. And at the minute, it's not going to do anything with that because we're not doing anything with that data in here. We're not taking it in and doing something with it. But what we can do is store this data I've passed in right here into a variable. So I can say name is equal to input and then the question, whatever I type in here, when I click enter, is stored in this variable. Okay, so I could then, if I wanted to, print this name back out to the console. And the way we print something to the console is very simple. We just say print, okay, <laughs> magical. And then we can output the name, which is this variable, which we stored this thing in. Okay, so if I run this again, I'm gonna click save and then run this. So I'll say Python area underscore calc and tell me your name. I'll say Sean. Then it's going to print Sean back out to me. You can see right here. So I'm printing this variable back out. And by the way, you can print whatever you want out here. You can print a number or you can print just a string. And I could print a concatenated string. So I could say hello and then concatenate the name. So if I save this now and run this file again and your name, Sean, it's going to say hello, Sean. Pretty cool, right? So let's take in another variable. This time it's going to be age. That's going to be equal to input again. And I'll say, and your age. So if I save this now, run it again over here, then it's going to ask me for my name, Sean, then my age as well. So I can type that in. Now we're not doing anything with age at the minute. So we're still just printing hello plus name, but we can print out the, uh, the age and the name if we wanted to. So how do we do that? Well, let's get rid of this. And first of all, I'm going to print out the name, right? And if I want to print out multiple different things on the same line, I could concatenate them if I wanted to. I'm also going to be able to use a comma, right? So it's going to print out the name first of all, then I can print out some kind of string, which is going to say you are, 
and we don't need to put a space there because when we use a comma, it automatically adds a space in uh, between each individual thing that we've printed out. So I'll add a comma again, and then I'm going to print out the age. So it'll be name, you are, age. So let's save this and run this one more time. Tell me your name, punk, Sean, age 30. And this is going to say, Sean, you are 30, as if I didn't already know. Thank you. So let's clear this. That is how we use input and print. So we take data in and we can print data out to the console. Cool, right? So now what I'm going to do is just comment all of this out. And if you want to comment out multiple lines in Atom at least, all I do is hold down control. Well, I select it all first, control and then forward slash. That's going to comment all of that out. If I do it again, it's going to uncomment it. Just a nice little shortcut. All right then. So this time what we're going to do is create a small little program to calculate the area of a circle. Talk about fun times. All right. So calc the area of a circle. So just a little comment there. Now, the first thing we need to calculate the area of a circle is the radius. Remember, the formula is pi r squared. Don't know whether you remember that from maths. I did. So first of all, we need the radius. We're going to ask the user for a radius, right? Then we're going to work out the area based on that radius. So to ask a user, we say equals input and then we ask a question. So we'll say enter the radius of your oops, your circle. And this is going to be in meters. So we'll just let them know that. And then when we've got that radius, we need to do something with it. We need to calculate the area of the circle. So we'll say area is equal to 3.142. That is the, um, the value of pi, right? So it's pi r squared. So we need to times this now by the radius to the power of two, that's squared. So in total, the area equals pi r squared, right? So now what we want to do is print out back the area of this circle. So I'll say print and I'll say the area of your circle is and then we're going to print out the area. So I can say comma then area, right? So what do you think is going to happen here? Do you think this is going to work? Let's try it out. So Python area underscore calc dot py enter the radius of your circle. Let's just do 10. And now we get an error, right? So basically this error is saying that we can't multiply the radius right here by these numbers. And that's because when we enter data in, it's asking us for this number and we enter 10. When it takes that 10 in and stores it in this variable, it stores it as a string. So not as the number 10, but as a string 10 like that. And obviously we can't multiply this string by 3.142 and square it. That doesn't make sense whatsoever. So we can't multiply those things together. What we need to do is turn this radius right here into an integer so that we can multiply these things together. And we can do that by saying int and then passing in the radius in the brackets. So this is called typecasting. And what we're doing is turning a string type into an integer type, right? So this then is going to become an integer 10. And then we can times it by this number and we can square it as well. So that's the general rule. Whenever we enter information here, it's going to be stored as a string. And if we need it to be turned into a number, we can use this int function to do that. So now if I say this and type in Python area underscore calc, we'll type in 10 again. Now we get the area of your circle is 3142. OK, let's just try another value. So same again, this time I'll say five and we get a different area of the circle. So there we go. There's your very first Python program to calculate the area of a circle, which is going to be particularly important for. Um, hmm, yeah, probably never. But anyway, that's how we do it. So in the next tutorial, we're going to move on and we're going to look at basic string formatting.